Hi, um, I'm Kanika. I'm a lead venture architect at BCGX and a co-founder of our Green Ventures team and offering. Um, I've been with BCG for about seven years where I've been building uh, and commercializing ventures across a wide variety of industries. Uh, but it was about three years ago when climate tech had sort of re-emerged as a trending topic uh, following the entire clean tech 1.0 boom and bust. Uh, when I came to a realization of really three things. So one, um, we're really at an inflection point in history that's being driven by this urgent need to address climate change. Um, secondly, the, inv the innovation and the investment that's required to actually get us on that 1.5 degree trajectory um, is on a totally different magnitude right, than what we have ever seen before, um, especially because of the required timescales. Uh, and because of that, we're going to really need far more resources to actually prove out and scale uh, the needed technologies rapidly. Uh, and the last piece, thirdly, is that we as BCG as a firm um, are really uniquely positioned to accelerate and unlock uh, both impact and value in this overall transition to net zero um, by leveraging our vast expertise, our capabilities, um, as well as our network. So that was sort of the genesis for my focus in green tech um, and the reason I do what I do. I'd love to shed a little bit more light on BCGX as we're a pretty, you know, newly launched entity. Um, I think, you know, when most people think of BCG, unsurprisingly, they think of us as a management consulting firm, uh, but we're really a multifaceted organization um, with a vast range of capabilities that extend kind of far beyond strategy. Um, so in, you know, BCG's 60 years of existence, we've really demonstrated an ability to innovate within the own business and kind of adapt to the, the changing reality that we see externally. Um, so, for example, you know, in 2014, we were really a first mover in the corporate innovation space with the launch of BCG Digital Ventures, which some of you, you know, may have heard of. Uh, and with that business, we actually took 200 businesses, over 200 businesses to market. Um, and BCGX is sort of like the, the latest manifestation, right, of our ability to, to be entrepreneurial um, and adapt to the reality that we see, you know, in the, in the macroeconomic environment. Um, and it's sort of a combination of our speciality businesses, including what used to be the BCG Digital Ventures brand. Um, so yeah, we launched BCGX in December last year, um, and we're really this hybrid that is combining technology design and build with business strategy um, to help business leaders achieve tech innovation at scale. Um, and deliver on some really complex end-to-end -end transformations that you can't actually do, right, just with consultants or tech vendors alone. Um, so as it might sound, BCGX does a lot of things. Um, you know, we're a team of, I think, 3,000 uh, plus technologists, uh, strategists, business builders, designers, and so on. Um, but one of our focus areas is actually green tech. Um, and what we're doing, right, is we're helping close the climate uh, innovation gap and accelerate the net zero transition through building, scaling, uh, and also in some cases investing in uh, climate tech uh, businesses and technologies that sort of fit within our thesis of high impact and value. Um, and how we do that, right, so we harness a lot of the, the deep sector expertise that we've been building right over the last six decades, um, combine that with our business capa business building capabilities that we've had right through our, our DV arm, um, and the vast corporate and strategic partner network that we have um, to, to make yeah, all of this possible. And to kind of make it a little bit more concrete for you, so we go to market in several ways. Um, so that includes working with corporates, uh, of course, um, to help them basically, you know, figure out how they can leverage their assets to, you know, be foundational to, to new business build or commercial opportunities in this decarbonization economy. Um, while also in some cases simultaneously, you know, progressing towards their net zero targets. Uh, we also help investors figure out how to mobilize capital towards uh, climate change um, and, and support right, this overall transition. Um, and then the last point that I'll mention is that we also recognize that climate change is a physical problem inevitably. And while digital solutions are, are really gonna help enable and optimize the transition, um, the majority of solutions are hard tech, right? So asset heavy, they're gonna require a kind of physical deployment and infrastructure to, to really help them scale. Um, so what we've actually been doing in the past few years is, is building um, 
relationships with a, a community of climate tech entrepreneurs uh, where we can help startups and scale ups actually, you know, execute uh, and increase their chances of success in these, you know, more complex and uh, longer valleys of death uh, that many of them experience in this space. The reason why we're coming right uh, to Innovation Zero is because there aren't really a lot of climate tech focused uh, conferences of this caliber and scale in Europe, uh, let alone the UK. Um, so for that reason, you know, we as BCGX, and I'm really excited. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for us to connect with this broader climate tech uh, ecosystem um, and build a greater presence for ourselves as well. Um, and I'll also mention, right, that we are fully aligned with the mission that you guys have, uh, which is about bringing together this vast ecosystem of players um, with this goal to really accelerate the partnerships as well as the collaborations that are needed uh, between those who are developing the low carbon solutions that are going to get us to net zero, as well as the players who actually, you know, desperately need to deploy these solutions um, and who are also looking to fund them. So we're hosting an exciting workshop uh, on fast tracking green tech deployment. Um, so you might know, right, that emissions are set to raise by 11% by 2030, um, yet they're actually required to fall by 45% uh, to actually limit warming to 1.5 degrees uh, above pre-industrial levels. So it really can't be underemphasized that we urgently need to advance climate tech um, to be able to take right, a sharp U-turn on this trajectory. Um, and our analysis has also sh highlighted that over 50% um, of our carbon equivalent uh, emissions emitted annually around the world can only be mitigated through new green technologies that are essentially still under development, right? So they're either at prototype stage or in demonstration stage. And these are the, the likes of low carbon hydrogen, CCUS, energy storage, biofuels, and so on. Um, so if these technologies are really going to, you know, play their essential role in mitigating emissions, um, and helping us meet those Paris agreements, um, they've got to achieve mass industrialization at least two to three times uh, faster than earlier green technologies, you know, like solar or wind, for example. Um, so there's this massive need to figure out how do we actually rapidly accelerate innovation cycles, scale up these technologies for industrialization, um, you know, secure access to talent as well as funding resources to really be able to unlock, you know, uh, mass market acceptance as well as demand. Um, so that's really not an easy task to achieve. Um, so we're going to be hosting this workshop, fast tracking green tech deployment, um, where we'll be speaking to a variety of players and engaging in a, a candid conversation around um, how do we actually unpick the hurdles that exist, right? To, to get to rapid industrialization uh, and how can we possibly overcome them together as a broader ecosystem and community. Um, and yeah, very excited for this. And, and we really want the audience who's attending to also be very engaged in this discussion. In terms of who we want to meet, right? Climate change is such a complex and systemic issue um, that in order to solve it, we've really got to treat it in its entirety um, as an interdisciplinary challenge, right? That really cuts across sectors, industries, and players. Um, so I'd love to meet innovative companies, whether they're small, whether they're big, uh, investors, climate tech enthusiasts, uh, and other ecosystem players who are really mobilizing their efforts towards getting you know, to net zero as quickly as possible, um, as well as those who are keen to collaborate with us or build relationships with us. Um, we're really going to need collaboration at every single step of the value chain and every single node of the ecosystem to address right this tremendous challenge ahead of us. Um, so I'm really grateful for the opportunity to participate in Innovation Zero um, and build the bridges that we need to, to actually transform uh, this global economy um, and decarbonize rapidly in the next decade. Twenty fifty is it seems very far fetched and, and far away, but in reality it's a lot, you know, closer than we really think, right? So we've gotta cut our emissions by half by the end of, you know, this decade by twenty thirty, which is an enormous challenge. Um so I think the the message that I'd like to send to everybody is 
you know, the, the time is really now to to amp up our efforts to to build the bridges that we need to have the challenging conversations that are required to actually overcome these hurdles uh, that exist in getting us to net zero. Um, so yeah, really want to network, mingle with others who are who are trying to tackle the same problem. Um, yeah, we're all in this together and um, looking forward to meeting you all. So we've got an exciting you know, lineup of attendees who are joining our session um, that we're just about to finalize. Uh, and they're each gonna be bringing different perspectives when it comes to fast tracking green technologies. Um, one of the startups that I'd love to highlight who's gonna be speaking in our session is Energy Dome. Um, they're an Italian player in the long duration energy storage space uh, that we're super excited about. Uh, they recently announced a 40 million Series B uh, financing round. So, you know, huge congratulations to the team. Um, and they're really going after this very real and growing problem of intermittency in the grid, right? So as we start adding more solar um, and wind to the grid, uh, we simply need more storage to be able to meet demand and make renewable energy uh, a reliable uh, and valuable contributor to the grid. Um, and while we've got lithium ion batteries, um, there's kind of a variety of challenges that we face, right? So the, the cost scale quite linearly um, as you start adding more capacity and duration to the storage. And then there's a whole host of supply chain issues. So there's a, a whole you know, world of players who are trying to tackle this utility scale, uh, long duration space. Um, but most of them are really having, or really talking about having a demonstration plant ready in like 2030 or 2035. Um, so the reason I'm super excited about a player like Energy Dome is they're actually taking existing and well-known technology and components. So the types of components that are very well known in the oil and gas industry, for example, um, that are very easy to use. And they're using that to actually go to market very, very fast. Um, so their breakthrough technology is called the CO2 battery, which is all about manipulating the state of carbon dioxide to, to basically store and dispatch energy. And the reason it's super differentiated is, is due to a unique combination of both high efficiency and low cost together. Um, so to me, it's it's a really you know fantastic example of a genuinely sustainable and practical solution to the green tech you know space that doesn't rely on inaccessible tech um, or materials. So I think very excited to have them join our panel. Um, I think there's a lot you know for for many of us to to learn around the way that they're actually going to market uh, and building their technology to be extremely scalable.